Hello and welcome everyone. Today is January 26, 2019, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukolo webinar. Uh, today we have a very special guest. We have Safira, also to some people known as Trinity. Uh, you can uh, find her. She's been a long-term member of Human Colony, so she's going to be channeling with us today. Uh, in the room we have Alex, we have Christine, Don, Ava, Ian, Lila, Marlena, Michelle, Reinhardt, and myself, Kara Newman. And before we get started, I'm just going to start with a few little housekeeping uh, notes. On August 8th through 11th will be the Ascension Workshop in Rochester, New York. You will be able to find out all the information on the website. It's coming up. It should be out on the website within the next couple days. But the workshop will be 575, and it's for four days and four nights. It includes food and lodging, and it'll the, uh, there'll be channeling classes and Reiki classes, and every day there'll be channeling, there'll be some special guests, and it's always been a really fun get together when everyone gets there. So check out the, start checking the website next week for information on the new Ascension Workshop. Also, uh, Ian, why don't you tell everyone about your channeling class? Sure. My name is Ian, and I'm the host of the weekly channeling class for Hukalo. And um, it's a class where channelers and would-be channelers, we get together and practice in a safe environment. And we have fun and get tips from each other. You can find it on the Facebook page at Hukalo Channeling Practice Club. Last. No, just Hukalo Channeling Practice Group. Um, we have it weekly. It's at 4.30 p.m. every Friday Eastern Time, and we do it through Zoom. So check it out and join us if you're interested. Thank you. Perfect. And that class is growing and growing, and it's good to see all the progress everyone's making. So doing a good job, Ian. So thank you for that. And then also, too, for anyone who is new to Human Colony or uh, is new to spirituality in general, has questions, there's a beautiful book that's available on Amazon.com called uh, From the Galaxy with Love, A Lightworker's Handbook. It's written by Max Rimple and Jim Charles, and it's a combination of several years of channeling done by Jim and then with the other information provided by Max. And it's it's just going through the purpose of being on earth at this time, your spiritual path, connecting with higher energies, and really why are we here, what are we doing, and what's going on in the universe. So if you are a light worker, you're waking up, if you want more information, please check it out. It's available as an audio book, as a, a PDF download, and also as a physical book, you can order it. Amazon.com from the Galaxy with Love, a light worker's handbook. Check it out. And if you do buy it and you love it, leave a really nice review. So, and also too, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I just, now it's going out of my head. So now I'm forgetting. So never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna move to, I forgot. I was, I had something else I wanted to share and now I, and now I cannot, I can't remember. Oh, oh, I do remember. In, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have a lot of really nice guests. Uh, next week, Jim will be back. Jim Charles, the week after that, we'll have Dr. Ram, uh, Mm. It's always fun and exciting. Yeah, uh, the follow, amazing. The following week, again, Jim, and then we've got uh, Don, who is coming that's your friend, Rick Jaggers. Am I correct? Rick Jewers, J-E-W-E-R-S. -E and he talks to angels. Yes. And he communicates for archangels and all kinds of angels. And, and directly to Father. And directly to God, directly yes. to God the Father. So he'll be back. And then, of course, Jim is sprinkled in. Uh, we have Michelle, who's going to host a few uh, a workshop and as for doing sound healing. So check the schedule. It's on hukalo.org. And yeah, we've got some nice stuff coming up. So, but today we have we have Safira. Hi, Safira. <laughs> Hello. You notice how yeah, I'm sorry. I know. Woohoo! There she is. So you're Hello. going to be channeling yes. today for us. You've got you've got a couple of beings coming through. Who's coming? Yes, <clears throat> yes. Um, Shakur is going to come, and then Sado. He is a Esasani. Okay. I I have a um, I have a friendship with a gentleman in Ireland. You probably know him. His name is Chris, and he has ships all over his skies and they communicate with him 
Mm-hmm. And I had a session with him and um, Jim. And one of his uh, connections, uh, Shabin, um, gave me Sado. He said, I'm going to give you someone from Esasani oh, cool. to channel. So that's where Sado came from. Oh, nice. Very <laughs> well, cool. He's relatively new. Yeah, he's relatively new, but he I have all already channeled him. Okay. And yeah, so I want to say that my style of channeling is more counseling than it is that I'm going to be able to tell you where your um, hybrid children are living and what their names are and things like that. Sure. Uh, because a whole different style from Jim. Yeah. And that's okay. <laughs> Just yeah, no, it's fine. Well, everyone has their own style and everyone has the information that the beings that they work with want to bring forward through you as a channel. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Normal. Very okay. normal to say. Thank you. So we, Thank we you. will Just take questions to... in the traditional way. If you have a question, uh, please put it mm-hmm. in the chat. Uh, Don is monitoring the YouTube chat, so we'll be taking questions from the YouTube. And uh, I don't see anybody here that's not in the uh, who's in the regular hangouts, but I, I've instructed Catalan if he comes because I can't see his question that when I say if there's any questions, he is permitted to go, I have a question. <laughs> so that I don't um, miss his cool. question. Yeah. Okay. So whenever cool. you're ready, um, we're, we're ready to go. Okay. Well, I would like to ask if we could have a few blessings. I think I would sure. feel awesome. really nice. Yeah. Is there anybody uh, that would like anybody to Anybody wants to, it doesn't have to be light language. It could be English, whatever you, whatever you want. Or toning or whatever. Yeah. Anyone? Anyone? Do one. We'll do one. Great. Thank Anyone you. Want to do one? There's feedback. Lila, do you want to do one? No? I don't uh, do toning. Okay, no problem. All right, Michelle, we'll start with you. And uh, if anyone else wants to do one, please let me know in the side chat. Go ahead, Michelle. May I say, a toko ushikada anana yatata, pay a toko ushikada na yase tila, but over the yase katana na yase, may a sakato ushikada. Katana yasu ko ushikada yase katara. Thank you. Um, why don't you do a, a blessing, uh, Trinity, Safira? You can do a blessing as well, please. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ashuahanaha maho hila oshia ma e shia hulo ho 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 shaba tia hamaka. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So whenever you're ready, so, you're ready, and uh, just let okay. us know when you're ready to go. Thank you. I will. I will take a moment again and. Greetings, I am Tikur. Greetings, Tikur. Welcome. Lirin, from the Lirin race, for those who do not know me. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. I am Lirin. We are a cat race. And I have been speaking through Jim and visiting many of you over the years because we are Hello. federation. Hello. We are in a federation called Gruk Fitnir, 
And we work with different races together to help the earth to her ascension. Excuse me, was there a question already? Uh, no, it was someone who hadn't had their mic muted, so excuse us for that. Very well, very well. Well, I have spoken through Safira before, and I enjoy these moments, and I have a little time today. So I am very happy to be here with you. I would like to talk about the colonies for a moment. For those who are not aware, we have set up seven colonies for those who would like to visit us in astral and to learn different things about channeling or telepathy. And we make videos, we have entertainment or relaxation colonies. We have several areas, a healing as well. And it is done in the astral. We can also strengthen your astral once you come to us. And we simply need your willingness. So if you say any time during your day or before you go to bed or you call upon us, then we put you on a schedule to come and visit. Now, there are people who are coming there from other parts of the world as well, whom you do not know. So, of course, it is not only members of your community. It is members and people from all around the world who come and who learn. And so we invite you. It is a very exciting and interspecial, intergalactic, interhuman experience because you meet other humans as well. And this is all in preparation for your futures. So this is all in order to bring you, your planet, into a higher dimensional vibrational way of being. And you may think that is an easy task, although it is done actually person by person by person. And so it takes time. We cannot just bring the earth up to fourth dimensional and all the people with it, uh, all of like this, because you would not be able to survive for very long if you were not prepared for a higher dimensional life. This means cleaning out all of the emotional pains and the angers and the resentments and all the things that happen as part of your human experience and to come into a state of unconditional acceptance and love towards yourself first, of course, and then towards those around you. And when you become this example of joy and love and service, of course, then those around you who are still struggling in the muck and mire, so to speak, of their lives, they can start to look to you for hope and for an example. It is what the churches and your other religious institutions attempt to do, but they, many of them, not all, have become themselves burdened by the need for acceptance. And what I mean by this is they have become, and many have become, afraid to speak the truth out straight up and straight forward because they would lose membership and they would lose financial support. So their message is quite watered down. And this is why it is difficult for the larger populations to find these kind of examples that we are speaking about as well. We are not your primary examples of 
We, by we, I mean our your extraterrestrial friends. We are not your primary examples. We don't want to be. We, we want to be, but we want you to turn to each other and turn to spiritual teachers among yourselves and also to Jesus because he is responsible to help in the ascension of the earth and as are the angels and some of your ascended masters. And if you can find these people among yourselves, there are many. And just in a relationship with them, you have an easier time actually seeing what it's like for someone to be living a higher dimensional life. You need actual examples, physical examples around you because you may come and listen to us speak with you and we enjoy speaking with you, but then you leave and we leave and you do your thing and we do our things. And then the words may not penetrate deeply enough because you do not see us in your day-to-day -day life, although some of you do. <clears throat> Can you understand where I am going or yes, thank you. with this? Yes, thank you. Very well. So I encourage you to look towards your fellows, your fellow humans, for example, those who are serving in your community, those who are of a religious, spiritual nature, who really exemplify the service of Christ, the love of Christ, the embrace of Christ, Christ consciousness, so to speak. Because this is where we would lead you as well if you were spending time with us. Thank you. Are you ready for some questions? Very well. Okay, uh, Lila has a question. Blessings, Takua. I was thinking about your ship today in the morning. So, and Blessings somehow, I will, so I am really uh, surprised that uh, we can uh, talk a little bit. Uh, the first thing, uh, the elite is controlling weather. And uh, they're doing for a few decades or several decades from the 60s or 50s. What can we do? What can I do something or anybody to uh, go against the energy? Or is there any uh, chance that we humans energetically can do something against the weather control? Thank you. This was brought up just yesterday in another group that the weather is partly created from human consciousness. Look at the tempestuous situations happening around your world economically, socially, politically. Look at the confusion and the division that is happening within your own country or within the United States of America. I'm not sure exactly what country you are from. Are you living in America as well? You know me very well, Takua. Well, I this channel does not remember. Okay. USA, Florida. Very well. Therefore, it is the collective consciousness which also controls the weather, is what I am trying to say. So yes, you have the power. If you can find peace within yourself, peace within your mind, peace within your body, the unity of your mind and body coming together in peace, then focus that peace on your physical environment. Focus it towards the weather. You can only fight darkness with love and light. And we don't like to use the word fight. 
It is not really, if you use the word fight, it becomes a fight. But let's say to, to swallow up, to dissolve, dissolving darkness can be done by projecting love and light. So if you find peace within yourself, if you find peace with the issues that your country is struggling with, send love, send love to your politicians instead of joining the intensified emotions from one side or the other. Find a way to send love and attempt to remain neutral. This does not mean that you are always on a zero point of thought. This does not mean you do not have your own clear idea of what is right and wrong. However, history will tell you what was right and wrong. It is not possible to know in this now moment exactly what all the truths are. Therefore, it is wise to remain neutral as much as you can and to find peace within yourself, within all of yourselves, within all of you, to find peace and to spread that peace. And then you can dissolve the darkness and dissolve the tempestuous weathers to some degree. Does that answer your question? Yes, it's uh, very general for everybody. And yes, so then, uh, it was perfect. Yes, perfect, it was, general for everybody. And that's uh, so true. I got my idea how I can uh, do uh, the healing and I wanted to confront, conform with you. My idea was to send energy to Antarctica. There's a special place what I have in mind, what I don't want to expose. And uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely. So you know what I mean? If you are telepathically could connect, then you know what I mean? I cannot connect you as deeply as you wish at the moment. However, if your intention is to send healing to a certain place, then by all means, there is no reason to hesitate for a moment to do that. It cannot, it can only benefit what you are attempting to do. Understand, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me just see. Uh, Michelle has a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Michelle? Sorry, I thought there were three. Greetings, Sorry, were three. Greetings. Hi, Shakur. It's been a long time. <laughs> Greetings. Hello. <laughs> so, um, I, why are you giggling at Shakur? <laughs> I am giggling. Uh, I am giggling with you, my dear. Yeah, you know, okay, there's a couple <laughs> of things on my mind, but really, uh, a self imposed crisis of sorts um, for form about. about my dear Michelle, I cannot hear yeah. you. Michelle, you can't be heard. You need to speak into your mic okay. a little bit louder. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, so I went through a period of time where I revisited old patterning about, I don't know, two to four months. It's kind of big. Um, so I'm kind of like trying to unravel that and, um, and I'm trying to, uh, is full of like past lifetime and this lifetime. I mean, they're very obvious. Um, Sound healing session the other day, and it was a I am not able. Oh, I am not able. Can you re-log, Michelle? 
Michelle, can you re-log because you're cutting out really bad. We can't hear but every other word. Can Why you don't you? I think there's some chat questions. So I'll re-log in. Okay, okay cool. All right. In the meantime, I'll take a. I'll, I'll give you a question from the chat, Takar, if that's okay. Very well. Okay. Um, let's see. Jess is asking uh, for Takar. There have been abrupt changes for me in the past day. What is the shift attributed to? And can I please request some healing and guidance? Thank you very much. Just a moment, please. Sure. It is important that you ground and shield because there are many energies coming in to the earth at this time and they <clears throat> are buffeting you spiritually from one. If you can imagine what I mean by a strong wind buffets, it, it's sending, you imagine a leaf being sent from one corner to the other, from one direction to the other. It is easy to get buffeted or thrown around by these spiritual winds, so to speak, if you forget to ground deeply and to shield yourself on a daily basis in the morning and in the evening and during the day as well. This could be part of the reason why you suddenly feel disturbances happening. And I do not remember the second part of the question. Hello. You're muted, Karen. Sorry, sorry, thank you. Can you please send some healing? Yes, absolutely, I will send healing and you can ask for healing at any time that you wish to your spirit guides, to your angels. They are always there. It is simply a matter of requesting with your heart, not your mind, but with your heart. And please remember to ground and to shield because at this time, there are many, many entities attempting to come in and to communicate and if they see an open door, an open light, they will gravitate. It does not mean that they are all negative, but it can be quite a mixed bag of experiences and beings and spiritual, from the spiritual world as well, incarnate beings. And so it is at this particular time, especially, and especially with a lot of turmoil going on in the earth and a lot of pain, which is being projected out and collected by the collective consciousness as well. Sometimes your pain is not your pain. It is not something that you are creating or you are doing. It is simply you are experiencing the collective pain and the pain of those around you. It is fortunate for most of you that you have a kind of protection from feeling the collective pain that is all around you in your own community, sometimes in your own home. There may be someone in pain and they are unable to communicate that pain. So they are silent, but it doesn't mean their pain is not being projected out to those around them. And those who are sensitive will pick it up. And so you need to keep the awareness that many times what you are experiencing or feeling is not coming just from you. But if you focus on it too much, then it does increase. So it is important to redirect your focus when you are feeling thrown about, you are feeling a sudden disturbances. It is like being on an airplane and coming into turbulent weather and you jump up and down in the plane and it scares you because you feel suddenly a loss of control and suddenly your life could end. All kinds of thoughts come in at those moments to you. 
it is similar when you are going through spiritual progression. You will come into turbulence. There will be those who want to throw you about here and there. There are those who want to support and educate you. And sometimes the education has to do with being thrown about a little bit here and there until you learn how to gain your footing, so to speak, and you find your practices which keep your footing very stable. Therefore, I suggest daily practices which can help you with this. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, are you back? I am. Okay, go ahead. Does my sound sound fine? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, great. Well, hi to Karen. So I am. Um, I really just want to address that I went through a period of like, well, lessons, let's say. And now I've been doing a lot of healing self and other. Um, and I had this really amazing shamanic sound healing session the other day. And um, immediately once the rattle started, tears started to flow. I mean, my body was jerking all over the place. <laughs> But one of the really interesting highlights, other than synesthesia, which is super awesome, um, is she did some instrument or sound that a yellow snake, like in my third eye awareness, and then it slithered through my body, like, and it was huge, huge. Half the side, it was on my right hand side. And it was, its skin was a pale yellow and it moved my whole rib cage as if I were a snake undulating, you know, like how they do. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you could give me any info on what that symbolizes or what that's about. Because that was <clears throat> very Then leave your body or did it stay within your body? I did not see it leave. I only saw it, in fact, only from my, let's say, the top of my pubic bone, my pelvis, my pelvis on the right side to, and then I undulated up through, and then like I flashed to another site of seeing things. Um, so it, it did not leave my body, it did not go out of my head, it didn't start at the base, it started like right at the top of the right of my um, pelvic bone. And then it undulated my whole upper body. And then I was like, whoa, because <laughs> it was huge. It was massive. Um, and was this a repulsive feeling for you or was this a? No, no, it wasn't repulsive at all. It wasn't scary or repulsive. It was just interesting. Mm, very well. I just. I cannot <clears throat> tell you exactly what that was. It could be your kundalini energy awakening. Are you familiar with the kundalini energy? It could be, or past life. Do we have Naga past lives? Are you, you are familiar with the kundalini? I am familiar with the kundalini. Very well. Have you ever experienced it being awakened before? Yes. But it didn't. Would, Pardon me? Would you say this was a similar experience? Because it can go dormant and be awakened and go dormant and be awakened. Different experience. Usually when I feel my kundalini, it comes from the base of my chakra and up through my spine, but it always stops at my solar plexus because my solar plexus is so jam packed full of <laughs> gross oh, very well. Well, it can be <laughs> which that I you, am trained. It can be that you have cleared some of that away and now this energy is able to move up to the rest of your body. Okay. So in light of that, just a more general now, question. 
question for everybody. Um, I would like to um, know your feeling um, or how you do it when you're, do you guys have chakra systems same as ours? No, not exactly the same. There are, there is a type of chakra system. It is not exactly the same. So how do we do what now? Um, so like I am aware that um, I have a lot to clear past life wise, this life wise um, in my solar plexus. And um, so I've been putting a lot of concentration on that. And I wonder if you have any practical suggestions on how to clear really entrenched past lifetime situations out of, um, out of a chakra, like practices. So like, for instance, yes, I'm studying, is, go ahead. This is not something I would give a general answer to because it is a very, it can be traumatic emotionally. Your solar plexus chakra is a seat of personal power and knowledge of who you are and the tools that you bring into your this life to use. And <clears throat> it is a point of confidence in, in yourself and self-belief. And of course, throughout generations, especially women, their knowledge of their true power and their identities have been suppressed. So of course... Can you mute your phone, please? I'm looking for it, sorry. Let me mute my microphone. Sorry, Chakra, please continue. Please continue, Chakra, sorry for that. I can't hear, I can't hear. Uh, someone muted uh, Ruth. <laughs> someone muted her. Muted her. Can, uh, Chakar, you're going to have to come out of your trance for a moment and unmute yourself. Uh, anyone in the chat, please do not mute people. <laughs> Thank you. Very well. Thank you, sorry for that. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Perfectly, thank you very much. Very well. I was speaking about your earthly woman being suppressed through so many generations and centuries that of course there will be many past lives that need to be forgiven and cleared. Uh, of course, within these lives there have been very powerful, successful lives. So it is not all simply filled with uh, negative energies and negative past lives. However, yes, of course, there will be a need to clear some of these. However, it is very sensitive and it is important that you find perhaps those who work with past life meditations to help you through it. And that would be one way to do it. The other way would be to pray and ask God and ask Jesus and ask your angels to help you clear step by step and then allow that you might have some dreams as you are releasing some of these memories. There are, or I would, I am not suggesting one or the other, actually both together is a powerful way to do it. So. It is a journey which can be taken alone, but is suggested not to be taken alone, if that makes sense to you. Yes, and, thank you very much. Yes, and the reason that many healers have trouble healing themselves is because humans are meant to be in community with one another. Right. Your pieces to a puzzle that Many try in their lifetimes to find the pieces that fit, that they fit into together, like a harmonious picture. And I don't mean fitting in in the sense of 
conforming, but just finding your soul family and your pieces of the puzzle that fit together. Therefore, it is wise to seek out others who can help you. Now, I would like to also mention, Michelle, that <clears throat> the pattern that you spoke of, there are ancestors of each person that affect their current life as well. So it is not only, as I said before, to the other woman who asked the question about their turbulence, it is not just you. It is not only your mind and your, your thoughts and your guilt and your, do not put it all upon yourself is what I wish to say. Mm -hmm. Your ancestors come through and what they want from you, they want that vice. They want to experience it again. They miss it. At the, yeah. same, <laughs> at the same time, they want, they are desperate for you as their descendant to be able to overcome what they were not able to overcome. Right. You are aware of this. Therefore, I want to say that when you get these, these biddings, these, these urges, this, this desperate, desperate feeling of needing something in this way, know that it is not only you, it is also you are getting spiritually influenced to do this as well. And it is at this time when reaching out to other humans is going to be important. Okay. Redirecting that energy, finding something that makes you feel similar without that exact object. Right. Um, thank you for that. It's very interesting because I've been, when I am getting healing sessions recently, I call in all my ancestors for some reason, which I've never done before. And immediately I feel a mass quantity of like thousands or I don't even know how many people like, energetically descend on me and I immediately burst into tears. <laughs> yes, yes. They are they are very grateful to you. All of you here on the earth, you have ancestors who are grateful to you because you are making the attempt to move forward and progress mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Mm -hmm. I would say that it is difficult to do this alone. Yes. And even contacts which are over your computers mm -hmm. are helpful. It is still not a replacement for human community. Right. This is what I said before, to go and find those people who can admire, who are just a little bit further ahead of you in their development, or they may not be so far, their spiritual understanding, you may know so, so much more about channeling or healing, yeah. but these people can be in service right. and their heart might be secure that you just want to be around them, you want to help them. This is an aspect that you may be missing and they have it. Right. So right. I don't always speak of those who are so spiritually high, but sometimes. When we need somebody who is so spiritually high than us, than you, then we feel like we cannot, we feel, oh, well, I'm, I'm happy for them, but it's nothing I can ever reach. Therefore, it is important to commune also with also, I'm not saying it's, it's important to commune with those who can give you a hope for the future, but also to commune with those who are on the similar road, but have made perhaps a few steps ahead, or they embody a trait that you long for yourself. This kind of community, this kind of communing with other humans. I really yes, we're appreciate growing. That. We grow as you grow as well. So we also do the same. We have a, we live in community. We live in community. It is what, it is just what we do. It is what other densities of 
the higher density, so to speak, higher vibrational life. It is, it is what we do. It is community. And this is where your humans can benefit if you would invest more of yourselves while you are trying to go spiritually in human, real human community. Right. Do you see Very well. that, can you see me living in a communal living situation? Would that be healthy for me? It, it, yes, it would be very healthy for you. Yes, it would be. All right. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Christine has a question. Go ahead, Christine. Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? You're low, but I can hear you. Hello, Christine. Greetings and blessings. Um, Greetings. I was wondering if you could tell me, um, I have these strange bite marks on my arm that just appeared the next morning. And my elbow is um, really sore. And I was wondering, what the heck was I doing at night to get these strange bite marks on my arm and a sore, sore elbow? Just a moment. I will see if I can find this out for you. Just a moment. Thank I you. may not be able to. Okay. Well, I will begin by asking you a very practical question. If you went to your medical doctor, they would ask you, were you sleeping near a particular animal? Could it be anything in your environment? I will ask you this first. It's a part of a crescent moon and it's um, the way it would, a dog's mouth would not have been able to, the two dogs would not have been able to grab my arm that way. And the cats, <laughs> the teeth are too big for the cat and too big for the for my two dogs. So, and I know I didn't bite it because I can't fit my mouth around my arm. Mm. <laughs> yes, very well. So it'll have it could to have be been, it could have been an, an insectoid. The nerve. I cannot tell you exactly what it was right now, you can ask more specifically <clears throat> to me uh, when you talk with Jim, but it could have been an insectoid attempting to implant you and either they were successful or you resisted. And this is why you have many Okay. They have been implanting, they have been attempting to implant uh, many people who walk in the light. Do you practice shielding and protecting yourself before you go to sleep? No. Very well. This is important. Okay. As I... okay. Excuse me? I have a hard I time at night so I'm usually up at all strange hours. I might sleep maybe two hours and then get up and two hours get up. Very well. Nonetheless, you can shield yourself at any time, whether okay. it is morning, afternoon or evening, and you can intend that shield to hold through the entire night, whether you get up or go back to sleep or not. This is not okay. important. Okay. And around your shield, put mirrors to deflect negative energy. And then ask your archangel, your personal guardian angel, to stand guard against any energies which would attempt to implant you or 
disturb you in any way which is not for your best and highest good. Thank you. Do you feel any bumps in your in the areas that you have these marks under your skin? No, it's just these huge freckles like in the crescent shape. Mm. And then my elbow will burn a bit. Mm. Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> I would suggest that you make a time with Jim to check for implants and then we can remove them at that time if that is the case. Yes, I put in a request. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. You're very welcome. Okay, thank you uh, for that. Okay, there's a question from in the chat. It's from uh, Cami, and she's saying, uh, would humans ascend on our own without any external help? How would the process be different without aliens? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is an excellent question. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that question. <laughs> yes. Well... It is possible to ascend on your own. It takes a person of incredible self-discipline to do so. And because it is not simply an intellectual process, as you know, it is not simply wishing to be ascended, as you know. It is going through the gamut, so to speak, of all human experiences and coming out from all of those with a heart of incredible compassion and acceptance and being free of all ancestral and personal karma. There are those born on the earth who are very pure in that sense. And so it is more natural for them and easier to wade through and to go through the process of ascension. Even in the spiritual world, you have your levels of existence. And there is an ascension from one level to another. That involves work as well. It is the work, first it begins with the longing, with this absolute longing in your being to raise up your spirit and your consciousness. It involves being in service to your fellow human being. Otherwise, why be born upon this earth, on this 3D experience? It is to be able to grow and learn and serve, learning through service. There are those who do isolate themselves for a period of time, as did Jesus, as do many of your monks and your other beings of spiritual enlightenment. It is important to be in isolation at times and to meditate and to know yourself completely, to really know who you are, not what you have been conditioned to believe. And this is also a process. And it is also important not only for isolation, but also to be in community with others because it is in community with others that you have the opportunity to see who you are. If you react to certain personalities, it is something to look at. If you need a mirror for your 
shadows, so to speak, then it is in community with others that you see yourself. It is your fellow humans who are your mirrors. As you know, I am only repeating what you know. However, many are shying away from community with their fellow humans because of the mirrors, so to speak. There are many who, in your own private life, you have mirrors in your home, but you pass them by without looking. You don't want to see. And it is the same in communicating with other humans. It is always a mirror, a mirror for the wonderful things and a mirror for the shadows. Now, as I have said, there are those who are born without much karma or much of these shadows to go through, and they will immediately be of service. They, they have the heart of service for others. Look for those people, be around them, learn from them. So can you ascend on your own? I am not quite sure it is possible to ascend completely on your own. If you sat for three months by yourself in a circle and you meditated and you tried to ascend, you would gain a lot of great understanding. But the reason you were born on the earth in this time is also to be able to ascend through your fellow humans and in service to your fellow humans. Do you need us to ascend? No, you do not need us to ascend. You can find much of what we tell you in books of deep philosophy, in some of your, in most of your mystics that are out there speaking even now in your ancient mysticism, in your current mysticism, you can find the principles and the words that we speak to you. You can turn to your God directly. You can pray to your Jesus directly. You can commune and learn what your Dalai Lama is teaching and how he is living. You have many wonderful examples already on the earth to learn from. We involve ourselves in your ascension, partly because of the outside attempt to disturb that ascension. So we are partly here to be bodyguards, so to speak, <laughs> in, the, in the atmosphere around your earth. So we are not only here just to babysit your ascension, but we are here to protect the earth so that she can move in that direction as well. This is, you have no idea how special this earth is and how special you are and what an experiment it was and what an experiment it continues to be and what extraterrestrials learn from you. As I mentioned earlier, you may be more spiritually advanced in understanding of some people around you, but do you have the heart of purity that they may have in service without expecting anything in return? Those are rare jewels to find. So we may be more spiritually advanced than you are in our understanding and in aspects of our lives where we do not deal with the same struggles, but humans are an experiment of multi-galactic cultural integration and your emotions are, are something that we envy to some degree. They are the cause of much conflict, but they are also the cause of intense passion and intense creativity. They are surely both to be feared and to be awed at the same time. So 
I hope that has answered your question at this moment as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, we do have more questions. Let me get back to my questions here <laughs> One moment. So that was a beautiful answer. So thank you for that and uh, sharing your your wisdom. OK, you're welcome. Let's see. Uh, Lilypad has a question. Uh, she says, I'm trying to, oh, well, she says many things. Let me get back to one of her first questions. <laughs> she says, I'm trying to feed as many stray cats, street cats as I can. But there is a female mother cat that doesn't like me to feed other street cats. <laughs> <laughs> How can I tell? She's asking, she's asking you because you're Lyra and I hope you know. Yes, uh, yes, I says, understand. How yes. can I tell this other cat to be nice to the others? Thank you. <laughs> I see. So let me see if I understood the question. I don't know if you speak street cat, but that's what she's asking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if I understood the question, there is one cat among many who is not, who is disturbing her feeding the other cats. I was not quite sure. Can you please explain this in a way I can understand it? Uh, Karen? Sorry, what was your question? <laughs> I'm if sorry, you can, I got distracted. If you can, fine, if you can re-explain the question. I didn't quite the question understand. Was, so the, the comment was is that she's feeding as many street cats as she can, but there's one yeah. female cat who doesn't like it that she's feeding other cats, I suppose. I guess it's a territory situation. And she wants to know how to uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, yes. How to tell this something, cat. Uh, give relax. something. Yes, yes. You, you need to treat this cat uh, a little more royally than the others. So when you are feeding the other cats, give this cat something special. Give it a little bit more. Give it, give it a treat. Give it something so it feels that it is special. It, it, it wants to make the point that it is special and it wants to be seen that way, sort of like a royal cat. And so you treat it a little royally, you give it a special treat, and it will accept you feeding the others. That is my answer. And I think that, Karen, you might be muted again. No, OK. Uh, thank you for helping, Takur. I'm uh, switching between windows here because I keep getting uh, questions. So let me let me get to the next question. One moment. Let's see. <laughs> Very well. One moment. Uh, OK. There's more and more questions, so. Uh, okay. Uh, Ecclesiast says, do green orbs carrying transitioned light beings, do green orbs carry transition light beings or extraterrestrials? That's from Ecclesiast. Green orbs. Mm. <clears throat> There are so many different types of orbs, mm. so many colors. A green orb can carry an extraterrestrial in one moment, it can carry a discarnate spirit in another. But yes, yes, I will say yes to that. And that is a yes to that question. Okay. A um, witness wants to know, do you have any pets of your own considering? <laughs> possible to have pets in my job at the moment. <laughs> okay. You have different types of pets. As you on earth have pets, yes. If I was home, it yeah. would be a different kind of pet. It is mm, difficult to describe to you, but yes, you have pets. It is just not on the ship at the moment. Okay. Thanks. And then this is a question, uh, maybe you can give your opinion about this question. It says, um, 
Why do scientists keep spraying massive amounts of aluminum through geoengineering, which will kill the trees and us in our skies? I would like to first, before I answer that question, say something more about pets. Sure. <laughs> it is not same type of closed relationship that you may have with your pets. We do not own a, another animal, so to speak, a pet. It is in a cooperative enjoyment relationship with us that remain and they come to visit. They may not always be there, but they come and they spend time. Mm -hmm. This is what I wanted to explain would be the difference between your pets and ours. As far as the spraying goes, yes, there is an attempt to modify the Earth's atmosphere. Mm. There is an attempt to, on one side, to experiment to see if it would be a toxic catastrophe if this if the there are some scientists trying to create a way for humans to survive after such a catastrophe might happen that is one thing and so there is an attempt to modify the weather there is also an attempt to simply depopulate your population you are now over 7 billion and there are many who believe that the earth cannot cannot survive much longer with 7 billion people well i will tell you that the earth could survive with 7 billion people if there would be a completely different understanding about how to live and how to eat and how to use your earth's resources as you have them now if that were the case 7 billion would not be too much, but it is seen as being too much. And therefore, there is an attempt to depopulate, unfortunately, and to control, because when humans get sick with their lungs and with different bodily systems, they must go seek medical attention. And therefore, the money that they have been saving is spent, is given away. So it is a system of getting humans sick and collecting back money from the humans. I know this sounds very pessimistic. It is not going to be successful in the extent that they are wishing it to be. And there are many scientists whose intentions are good. They feel that what they are doing is a good thing. I know this sounds difficult to understand, but they feel it will benefit the earth if there would be less humans and that we could give more to everyone who is left, or we could control everyone who is left. However, it would take a massive educational process on the part of your humans to rise up and to stand up against this practice. I know that many of you feel powerless and you feel at a loss on how to stop this. You see it happening all the time you look up in your skies and many of you say, oh, there are the chemical trails again today. They are spraying today. And it is very difficult to get down to the actual organization and the actual owners of these planes and the governmental department or the local governmental department, which is doing this and, and in control of this. But you do have many of your activist groups who do have more information and they could surely use your support. 
whether it be in light in writing, whether it be in phone calls, whether it just be in you educating yourself about exactly <laughs> why and where and stand up and rise up. We cannot do this for you. We do try to limit the damage which is done, but it is we can help, as it has been said before, with natural disasters. It is more difficult to help with artificial disasters, and we are busy protecting you from all other forces around you as well. So we want to say that this is something that if you are horrified, if you are horrified, then find a way to stand up and to unite with others who are also doing the same and attempt to stop it, at least in your local area. And then from there, you can spread the story of how you were successful in your local area and others can pick that up as well. This would be my answer to that question. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, there is a question from Ava in the chat. Go ahead, Ava. Thank you. Um, blessing sticker. Hello. Question about vaccines, because you mentioned the population of um, humanity. Is flu vaccine and maybe some other um, vaccines are created for that purpose, since they have so many um, additives which which are very toxic? And um, is it I also a weapon against yeah. our children since they are waking up so early now? Yes, I thank you for your question, thank my you. dear. I am going to get myself in a great deal of trouble. <laughs> this is a extremely controversial subject, as is the chemical trails as well. <clears throat> However, the, the vaccines, when the vaccines were originally developed, they were an immense benefit. They were an immense goodness in the beginning to any of the diseases which could have been epidemic, so to speak. That was their purpose was to, since the Black Plague, or since plagues which just spread like wildfire and killed millions of people, the vaccines were a way to stem the plague-like infestation of certain diseases. Once it was understood what they are able to accomplish, then of course there are those who have nefarious motivations for using them. So yes, there are factions which, well, as I have said, there is and has been a deep population um, agenda in many different ways on your planet. And those who are behind it believe that they are doing the best thing for your planet and for the future of your planet as well. There has to either be a massive change of the way things are done, or these people who are behind it will feel, continue to feel justified in what they are doing. Now, this is all I am going to say. I would suggest that all of you, especially when you have children, but it is not only children, there are some who also have a very adverse reaction to different um, immune, immune, immunizations that you have on your planet as adults. Um, however, the, you must be careful. You must be careful. You will see on your advertisements that one person took a flu shot and died the next day, and therefore all flu shots are evil. This is also not the truth. You also have to investigate. When something is true, it is true over a very long, long period of time. Therefore, you would have to truly want to investigate, not only believe in a conspiracy theory, 
as you call them. And uh, I am not only speaking to you, dear Eva, I'm speaking to all in this. Uh, it is easy to believe, but each side will take photos and use, I, use stories and they will embellish. And it looks like it is the truth when it, it has been manipulated. So there is always a truth to a conspiracy theory. A truth, not the truth, not the whole truth. A conspiracy theory could not flourish if there was not a reason, if there was not some aspect of truth to it. Now, many years ago, in September 11th, 2001, I believe it was, you had your Twin Tower explosions your attacks, and then you had many buildings go down around it. And this, there were those who were sure that this was a conspiracy. There was a resistance to this conspiracy for many, many years. Now you are coming almost up on 20 years. But now there are other governmental departments who have been, and scientists, who are now coming to the conclusion that there was probably something to these conspiracy theories that some of the explosions were done purposely and for financial reasons and for other political reasons. It doesn't mean the entire attack was a total conspiracy. Do you see where I am telling you that you must be careful not to believe all or nothing, but to find the middle ground in a conspiracy, especially where it will affect your life and the life of your children and your grandchildren. So the chemical sprayings are definitely something it is important to investigate and to find out where they are originating from and who is doing them and how can you stop them. With the vaccinations, you must know before you Tell your children who have children or your grandchildren, do not vaccinate because this will happen. But you must know all of your facts and the largest picture before you say that. There are those who say if you do not vaccinate in a certain area, then these diseases for which they originated with these vaccinations will return. And there are many legal systems set up in your country in order to prevent children from being with other children if they are not vaccinated. So it is a very complicated, complicated subject. And I would be wrong to damn the whole idea of vaccinations. This would be very wrong of me to say that. It would also be wrong of me to say that your fears are unfounded because they are also founded. <laughs> I am afraid I have not helped you very much. I am simply wishing to give you a very, very broad, broad picture. Take your lens and move them out and see the entire picture. That's what you need to do with anything that is of great concern for you and those around you. Thank you for your, thank you, that is my answer. Thank you for that. That's a, it's a big subject and many people have different opinions. Go ahead, Ava, sorry, I didn't know if you were gonna respond. Go ahead. I just, want, I just wanted to say thank you. You are more than welcome, my dear. All right, one second now. Let me get back to the list of questions. One second. Oh, Leela, Leela had a, a, a question. Go ahead, Leela. I do have a child on your ship. Uh, his name is Ram. Uh, can you tell me how he's doing? Mm, I believe you came in a bit later to this meeting where I shared that I would not be talking about those things in this particular time. However, I will tell you that search your feelings. How do you oh, feel what you're doing? Uh, okay, can you tell me if I am visiting often in Astro, your ship? You are visiting the colonies? Do I, do I visit? You visit the colonies, it is not 
as often as you might believe, but you could be visiting many other, if you have many active and vivid dreams of being on different ships or different places, then they could be others aside from ours. But yes, you do occasionally visit. Yes, you do. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, there's a question from Udaman Shukla. He says, I feel some slight dense energies around me. How can I better connect to my spirit guides in this situation? Just a moment. It is your spirit guides which will help you lift the density. So I would suggest you take some time to be quiet and quiet your mind and your body through breathing. Ask your spirit guides to help you lift the density. The density often comes from experiences we have that you have as well where we and you, because we experience emotions as well, that can get in the way. So when you have experienced something and you say to yourself, oh, I, I shouldn't be feeling that. I, I, I need to be loving. I need to be kind. I need to emulate this and emulate that. But meanwhile, you have felt hurt by something or angry by something. And when you try to push that feeling aside and you haven't been quite successful at it, although you have been successful at believing you have, then it can also create some of this block energy blockage or densities that you are feeling. But you can ask your spirit guides and your guardian angels, and you can also someone you, you trust to you know, help you. Like for example, if you are using crystals, you can use selenite. It will clean out your energy systems. And you can also write down your experiences and express what you experience and why you might feel upset about it in writing. That will also help to disseminate some of the energy from it. And if you need to find a way to express exactly to the person that you need to express to, then find a way to be assertive without being unkind. And they will appreciate that. And you will. this will help you clear some of your densities. This is not only for you, this happens to all. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's some more questions, so just one moment. Let me give you the newest question. Actually, I have a question because I, I, I want to, uh, there was a comment made by someone saying um, that, of course, uh, of course, that in our 3D situation, we, we uh, are challenged. But that's also part of our experience is to be challenged in our 3D vessels and to to learn to overcome that. Can you kind of maybe ex explain a little bit more about what is the purpose of us being here and facing all of these huge, huge challenges, these huge choices that we have in front of us and to choose one path over another path? How many hours do we have remaining? We've got 30 minutes, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was attempting. You want to touch on. You, you you alluded to it earlier. But I you want to touch? Yes, I I was using I was trying to use Lyra Numar <laughs> because it is a question which can be philosophized for for forever for for you beings yeah. as well. Why are we here? Why are we those of you who are especially in your 3D realities and going through what you are going through. Yes, it is an experiment that went awry. And yet there was continuous, continuous, 
continuous birth, continuous population, continuous spirits going from life to death into the spiritual world with their lament, then coming back with their lament. There is so much, so much lament, so much lamenting throughout your thousands and thousands of years of history and so much plunging into the dark ages. Uh, it is simply that what could have been a short-lived resolution became unresolved. And then the population just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And so partly you are here as a result of just simply that, just simply a continuation and a continuation and a continuation of your history and the separation that you had to go through in the very beginning from your original selves, your original roots, your original power, your original co-creatorship with your God and with your gods. And I will say gods because God is male, God is female, God is the earth, God is all things that are natural around you and within each and every one of you as well. So because of that loss, it just became a perpetual wheel of birth and karma and restoration and birth and karma and restoration. And so it is an attempt for you to break out. This is the hard work of breaking out of belief systems that you have been embedded with from birth, even though you are also aware when before you are born of all of your possibilities and all of the greatness of the galaxies and universe around you, and even of your own greatness. Unfortunately, when most are born, but not all, but when most are born, they forget and must go through the challenges, as I have explained to Michelle, that your predecessors, and they may not only be your ancestors, but the more you come into the light, the more those who are seeking the light come to you, and they are hoping that you can save them, so to speak, by doing better than they did in a similar situation. So therefore, you are confronted with situations that have been presented over and over and over again through generations and how you deal with them and how you can get past them and get healing your past lives and also forgiveness and forgiving once you understand what has been done in your ancestry. Because you on your earth, you have your your what is it called? Your ancestry research. Your ancestry. Your ancestry. Yeah. Ancestry. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, so many of you are now, finding out your genealogy. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So many of you are investing in finding out your genealogy and making uh, very interesting connections to it. But there are also those who have the spiritual gift being able to tell you the things your ancestors have done which coming through you for restoration it is about restoration and cleansing 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 now in this time there are many and there have been those who have taken on karma beyond their own in order to help their fellow human beings they go through a lot of suffering and silence. They may not even be aware that they are doing it, but they have agreed to do it beforehand. And they come in with themselves with a purity. And because of their purities, the cleansing that they do is very powerful. The restoration, the taking on of karma and cleansing it that they do is very powerful because they come in with little themselves, but they are willing to step in for the sake of humanity. You have no idea 
of the humans right around you, maybe in your next house next to you, who are doing amazing, beautiful things for their fellow human being. There is really, this is what gives us and what gives God hope is the goodness and the light that is also emanating and the help you now have to get through these karmic issues, so to speak. Now there is much more help available to you, many more healers, much more understanding of why things happen the way they do. And as I have also said, that many of the thought patterns that you have that drag you down and make you dance are not necessarily your own. You began with the thought, you began with the doubt, and then there were energies around you which jumped on it and multiplied it. And now you feel you're a horrible person with all this doubt. But just know it is not only you that your burden is also added to, but that it is important to learn to control your thoughts because your thoughts are being created. They create mass, they create form. This is why I partly wanted to say to Michelle before that the snake could be a thought form projected onto her by others. But this may not be the case, and I will not say it now. But I will give the benefit of the doubt to the Kundalini. However, this is what I want to say, is that your thoughts that you send to others, your beautiful thoughts send beautiful forms. Your negative thoughts send spears and arrows. Literally, those who are able to see with their spiritual eyes can see an auric, the auric bodies bleeding from the wounds. And these wounds are projected many times by others through jealousy, through anger, through resentment. This is why understanding these patterns and, and forgiving and forgiving your ancestors and helping them through their forgiveness, through their restoration as well. Oh yes, it is a lot to deal with, but there is also a lot of help. Now, I was asked a question. I gave an answer. It may not have been necessary for you to know all of this because intuitively many of you do what you feel you need to do in any case. I do not wish to burden you, but I do wish to tell you that there is also tremendous love and light and hope around you and within you and what your fellow humans are doing for goodness and the sacrifices they are making and the karma they are taking on that is not their own and the, the service that they are doing, oh, it's just, it is hopeful and joyful and enlightening. So I want you, we want you to continue, enjoy. And I know I have said some things that may not feel so joyful, but I've simply laid out a certain reality about why you are here. But you are here as temporarily as you wish to be. You don't have to keep returning and returning and returning. The harder you work now in this carnation, the more free you are to move on to other planets, to other experiences afterwards. It's up to you. And that is a joyful thing that it is in your control. And find things to do that bring you joy because doing this in a heavy spirit, you see the sacrifices that are made, the more that they are made in joy, the more potent they are. The more your prayers are said with all of your heart and the joy you can experience in praying and the joy you can, the love you can experience from God as you are praying for others is very potent. When you suffer with joy, and I know this sounds like a very contradictory thing to say, but when you suffer with joy, without victimization feeling or self-pity, then that is potent and covers a tremendous amount of darkness. It dissolves 
a tremendous amount of darkness around you. I am done. I hope that that has answered your question to some degree. Thank you so very much. Yes. Uh, Cami has You're a question welcome. about the government meetings. Do you have any new information? Is that something you can share or do we need to wait for it? It is not something. No, not today. Okay. Forgive me. All right. Lilypad wants to know, will Donald Trump finish his term and be re or be reelected? I say, well, you're not really a, a, a fortune teller, but maybe you do have an opinion. Finishing his ter term means that he will not try to be reelected? No, it means he won't be impeached or kicked out. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> maybe, he'll, maybe he'll make it to the next election. And the question is, will he be reelected? Will he finish his term? What, they, they just want to know how much longer they have the pleasure of Mr. Trump. I see. Well, I did speak earlier to this. You remember, I said to send light to your politicians and to try and remain neutral because these kind of attitudes are not helpful and of wishing him to be impeached is not. I don't think she's wishing. I think she's just actually asking, do you know if he'll well. make it? I'm speaking in general. I'm speaking in general. There is really nothing upon which your president can legally be impeached. So therefore, I would say no. However, I am not going to tell you 100% because this is also your responsibility as well. He is your president. We would suggest that you pray for him if you feel he is so wrong and so hurtful, then I will tell you that you do not know your president. You do not know who he is. You think you know, you think you see, you do not see. This is all that I will say. Please pray, pray for him, pray for him, send him love, send him light, ask that it be revealed to you more about who he really is. If you do not know, you really do not know. <laughs> this is all that I will say. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, Ecclesia says, love and light to all beings that volunteer to into the human vessel experience. Oh, I think he's just sending a blessing never mind i don't think that's a question let oh, me oh that but that is beautiful thank that you beautiful as well. for saying that thank you because many of you did come and and thank you because i i need to mention this as well many of you did come to help with this restoration and this healing of your fellow human beings you didn't you came outside of this cycle that I spoke of. You came for the purpose of growing up and being able to be a support system. So I, I was asked before, do you need extraterrestrials to ascend? And no, however, many of us came in, in energetically at least, or those in the higher spiritual realms came to be incarnated at this time in order to assist their fellow human beings through the process. So we are with you on the earth in different forms. It may not be necessary to speak with us directly in this way. We come in this way simply to, to, hmm, to prompt, to prod, to encourage, to help you come together with each other actually in community and service and to support each other on your paths together. Uh, all roads are going to lead to the top of the mountain, but there are many paths to get there. This is not, uh, this is really the, quite an old saying you have on your planet, 
but it is true. And if you imagine climbing the mountain and there is a steep ridge and there is those below you, and what do you do? Do you just go on and say, I've got to get to the top? No. If you are truly headed to the top, you will reach down your hand and help those below you to come to your level and even surpass you while you are guarding and making sure that they are successful. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. There's a question I have. Do, yes. you, do, do the beings on your world spend as much time asking these questions like what is the meaning of life? Why am I here? Is this is this no. also a no? Because <laughs> you know, I, I don't I, I also have an opinion that there's a big difference between being awakened and being enlightened. And I don't know that all of the beings that are on ships are necessarily enlightened. They might be awake, but I don't necessarily think they're ascended beings. I think that's a very high level of existence. And I don't necessarily think just because someone is on a ship is they are enlightened. So maybe you can yeah, talk about course. that. And also maybe talk about in your society, is this is the <clears throat> question that, that all mankind is asking since the dawn of time, why am I here? Is, is, that, a, is that also a question that is in your society? Well, when children are growing, they are, of course, curious and very curious, and they are also start their learning process much earlier. So, yes, there is always the question as we are growing uh, to as to who who is this being? Are you look at your they look at themselves and they're like, who am I? And 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 what is this? And how does this work? And and what is my identity? And why am I here? Uh, as they grow, they are educated and they fit quite well. We we understand quite early where their proclivities lie and where their strengths lie. And so they are given perhaps a, a work to do, if you want to say work, uh, a life's path to contribute, because all contribute to the whole, as well as contribute to their individual selves. Uh, where they are most harmonious and can enjoy what they are doing. And so, but all beings will want to eventually reach the level of God themselves. It is the sole purpose of all beings to continue to grow and to reach a higher level of understanding and ascension. It is just the way things are. So, yes, we also have moments where we are wondering, you know, where, what it's going to be like in the next stage and, and perhaps how to get there. But our life is simpler, more harmonious. We are not forced to work in order to make money, in order to survive as it is on your planet. This is why I said, if things would be completely different in the way things are done, then overpopulation and starvation would never be an issue, <clears throat> as it would never be an issue with us. Now, we have our planets and we have our ships and we take with us those on the ship who are going to be part of our overall work that we are doing. So yes, not everyone is ascended, of course, but there is a level of, of maturity, a level of having, a level of fitting in harmoniously with the overall purpose of which we are doing our mission together. So yes, there is a difference between being totally ascended and working on our spiritual growth. But for us, it is more hand in hand so that they are not separate issues. As we grow up physically, we also grow up emotionally and spiritually in a much more harmonious way so that we are not always struggling with this identity. Can you, has that answered your question to some degree? Hmm. Sorry, I was muted. Um, the question was based on something a little bit different. Um, I, a friend of mine pointed out to me today, there was a, a guy who was quite young and um, 
he seemed to be very spiritually aware. And he, as he sort of divested from the world and went more into his spirituality quickly, you know, his ability to hold a job and have a house and all of these things became big challenges for him. And he ended up homeless. And even though he was sort of, you know, very much uh, still trying to pursue his spirituality, eventually just based on, you know, the fact he couldn't get a foothold in the world anymore, he ended up taking his own life. And we were discussing, uh, you know, why, you know, in, in, in India, it's a, di a little different. You can have a life where you are specifically spiritual and that is sort of your life, your job, your ex experience, your existence. But in the, in the majority of the West, we treat people that are homeless or, you know, not having enough money terribly. And we, not only do we treat them terribly when they're experiencing their sort of bad luck, we would call it, but we kick them even further down. We hold them down. And, and it's just, it's fascinating as to why people are so predatory against other people, especially when they are struggling to fit in the world. Do you know? <clears throat> so it was just a philosophical conversation. I was just wondering what you said is you don't, you don't have this situation where people are having to work for money and money is really that thing that is the difference in the West of if you are taken seriously, if you have opportunity, all of those things, you know, not so straight across the board, but it was just something that I was pondering and I wanted your opinion on it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It is not only many people who see homeless, and on your planet and walk past, or it is partly shame, partly fear that this could be them. They are seeing a future they do not want to face. And the reality is that anybody can face that future at any time. And this is scary. This is partly. And partly it is simply the mentality that I just have barely enough, I cannot share it. As I said, if things were done in a completely different way, if there was a different mentality that this is not my house, this is not my car, this is not my penny, it is the holding on so tightly because you know that it's the ultimate truth. You have no control. And the more fear of having no control you have, the tighter you hold on to what is around you and say, this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. And when you have 7 billion people saying, this is mine, this is mine, I am too afraid to let it go, then you have the mentality where the homeless can actually exist. It is a cycle, as I have said, and it can only be changed one person at a time. One of you, and there are those who actually do reach out and feed the homeless and take care of them as much as they can. There are even children who do this, which is a beautiful, thing to see, that there are children who see homeless and they cannot bear it. And so they go home and they prepare food and they beg their parents to bring the food to the homeless or they bring blankets or there are just many who do this as well. I always want to emphasize the goodness that is done in this situation as well as the darkness that seems to be expressed. So when your collective consciousness can come out of the fear of letting go, when they can come out of the fear and let go is what I wish to say, and then not hold on so tightly to what is mine. Can you imagine if your nature all of a sudden decided to do this? There would be no oxygen. <laughs> you would, you're, Earth would die within 
hours or days or whatever it would take. But so your imagine your human consciousness, your humans <clears throat> unable to live according to the model of nature. And this is what causes all of these problems. That young man who took his life was not in community for sure, was not among those who were wise and said, you can ground, you can find something to do that you can enjoy that fits to who you are, your character. And this is a way of growing spiritually at the same time. It is really not one or the other. It is really not being spiritual or being uh, earthly, being too much in 3D or being spiritual. And this is where you often get in trouble when you say it is either or. No, it is together. And the more you can find joy in what you are doing and the more service you can be to those around you. And it can be very, very, very simple, simple things, very simple acts of service. The more you grow spiritually. So you need your body. You need your 3D life to grow into the 4D. It was just, it is just how it is. And therefore, it is important to take care of your body and to use your body as much as you can to grow your spirit through living the life and being part of others and service and just being creative and producing beautiful things around you that will resonate and be passed on. Yes, this is all part of growing spiritually. I hope to some degree. Yes, thank you. Yes. I think now it is time. I feel that um, Sakura is getting overly um, needing to drink or something. We are right at that. We are right at the top of the hour. So we're happy to have oh, very you. Well. And <laughs> very well. Thank you. Yes. To go. yes, thank you yes. so much, Chakra, yes. for being here with us. I am so grateful, and I do I need to apologize to Sado. I know he wanted to also speak today, and I hope that next time he will have a chance. He is a very delightful, a very delightful being. <laughs> you will also enjoy your time with him. I'm very Thank grateful, you. and I, but I'm very grateful to have spent this time with you today. And in, in a different way than you normally experience me. And I'm happy for that too, because I also have different personalities, not in the sense of being personalities, but I express myself differently through different personalities, which is also harmonious with mine. So I thank you and for being with me and for sharing your thoughts and your questions with me. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much, Shakur. And to everyone, does someone want to give a blessing as we go? Would someone like to give a blessing as we as we depart? All right. <clears throat> Christina gives a blessing. She says, blessed be to it's, it's very different to hear a female voice uh, speaking to her, though we, we're used to Jim's <laughs> male took her voice so. <laughs> yes yes I, I am aware yes. <laughs> my voice is still low but it is not as low as through Jim no <laughs> <laughs> our, our beloved you. Jim. so thank you very much <laughs> much love to you and blessings to everyone thank you I will give a blessing if I may this is Mimi to her hello oh 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 Mimi hello all right. Hello. <laughs> yes. I would be so happy for you to give a blessing. Thank you. You're welcome. Akasasha soli ni mini kasha salaka. Asha sono mi sikala sho soli kishi sili mi sefira. Asoni mini kasha salasho. Ekisa kasha soni mi. Asoli ni kasha sala kasha so. Amini kasha kasur kitala kasha siki tiri simini. Namaste. Namaste, namaste. Take what you have learned today, my dear, dear fellow brothers and sisters in the galaxy, my galactic brothers 
and sisters and my galactic children. And simply allow to sift, allow the words to sift and to settle where they will. Be free and full of joy and unburdened and know that you are doing the very, very best that you can possibly do. And my words are only to help you see a larger picture, to balance out both sides, if you will, if that was necessary for some and not for others. It matters not. It is all of us need, all of us, even us in speaking to you, we benefit from what we share ourselves and what you share with us. So thank you very much and namaste and much love. Namaste and much love. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I'm happy. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I, I can't turn my picture back on and my computer screen is frozen. So that's why I've been having trouble unmuting and muting. So I do we're live oh. still, by the way. Sorry? We're live. I'm live? Yes. We're still live, yes. I didn't hang up yet. I didn't say, I didn't sign off yet. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Please do not micromanage my uh, podcast. <laughs> Please reprimand me off, <laughs> off camera. <laughs> oh, anyway, so what I wanted to say was thank you so very much, uh, Safira, for your sharing your information and um, beautiful uh, messages. And it's uh, it's nice to have an alter alternative aspect of Takur coming through. So thank you for that. Thank you. I'm so thank happy to be able to do this today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. And then so next week, Jim will be back. And the week after that, we have Dr. Ram. Uh, he's always a, a, how do you say it? He's always an adventure. So, but mm, really brilliant. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. so everyone take, have a good night's sleep on uh, February the 8th, because February the 9th, Dr. Ram is here. And we all need to be on our, uh, on our best behavior so that we can focus. And, uh, and, and you know, Karen, mm. oh, sorry, Karen. He's one of those mystics that Takur was talking about. You know, like there's uh, there's Dan Winter, there's Dr. Ram. Um, there are just so many amazing mystics on the earth today that would say the same things that the other that other extraterrestrials would say you know, if we would just really listen, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it'd be okay. great. Yeah. So thank you everyone. Much love, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Bye everybody. I may or may not be able to even stop the broadcast. <laughs> I'm serious. My whole computer screen is frozen, so I'm just trying. Okay. I have to I have to literally I I don't think I can stop the broadcast. Okay. Well I'm going to leave. If everybody leaves, there's no but I, I I'm I am gonna hang it up so that should do it. So okay. again, much okay. love everyone. Bye bye. Okay, much love. Bye bye. Love. Thank you, Karen. That was bye -bye. great. Thank you. <laughs> I can't stop the broadcast. <laughs> Everybody, let's hang up. One, two, three, go. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm going to have to quit. <laughs> it's terrible, right? You're going to have to hard, 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 uh, just turn your manually, your whole computer off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to just close the window. That should do it. Yeah. If not, yeah. I will see you guys next week. It, eventually, just stop watching in about two seconds because uh, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> oh, you guys are still here. Sorta. <laughs> Woof. See, Charlie objects to it too.
still, I have to go out.